on the lasso guard for probably 10, 12 years now. My instructor, Gustavo Machado, uh, has a, he calls it the quarter guard, quarter guard sweeps and submissions, I think uh, is what he made a DVD years ago. And my buddy and I, Greg Walker, were overseas uh, for a few months and we worked on this lapel stuff uh, and the lasso guard for probably four months straight. And it really started to evolve my game, not just because the, the, the lasso guard part of it, but the way I like to teach it, starting from a closed guard position, allows you to start to identify like how to move your hips and get into different types of guards. So using my hip motion to frame arms and start getting wedges inside and making space, and then allowing me to get into different types of guard as a guy starts kind of, uh, you know, defending and passing and, and getting those situations, right? So I like it uh, with the, lapel on obviously the, we're going to do some lapel sweeps and things as well um, but it does most of the things that i really really love work in no gi as well so the best sweep in the world probably ever i think uh, i'll show you at the end of the thing it's it's a no gi gi it doesn't really matter but the first process kind of baits everybody into this idea so if i'm not like dangling a carrot or bothering them some way or another it's not going to be as effective so i like to kind of set things up bother people and then start getting into uh, this position. So the lasso guard can, can happen in all kinds of ways. And I'll just give you a mark and I've already started. This is my, my best friend, uh, Mark Lawrence. He's been the Uki for everybody, I think, at the camp. That's running been, a joke now, isn't it? He's been to every <laughs> class. I don't know how this guy's doing it. So, uh, you know, idea, I always talk about if it's a lapel thing and we got geese on, like I slap hands with a guy, I'm gonna open this, like immediately. My hand goes up here, I'm like, oop, oop, gee. Maybe I grab here now, right? You can play. <laughs> now I'm in the lasso guard. I go half guard lasso. Uh, some people go leg on the outside. You know, you can kind of play around with it. My idea is, uh, you know, half guard lasso. So there's an option. Uh, side control, please. Just get side control. So side control, this elbow's free. I start to frame, move, knee comes inside. I get into a lasso guard. And this can be like shallow lasso to make some space and prevent it from passing. Or I can go into deep lasso and then I get back into half guard. So there's another option. There's all kinds of ways to get in this, this position, right? We're gonna to start today from a closed guard position. So for uh, no gi guys, I'll give you some options, but first we'll start off with the gi. So sleeve grips, right? Looking for those sleeves. I do uh, four, four fingers. So my first three fingers really do most of the work here. I squeeze with those little pinkies, makes it the strongest grip. And I do like a you know horse stance and karate type position. So I'm gonna open up my legs, and this is what I'm talking about like with the, the hip movement and starting to get an idea of how to uh, open your guard and start playing open guard type scenarios, right? So actually we've been talking about a lot of like Kegels all week and that uh, little Pilates ring. I think this is really important. So I'm always squeezing my knees together here. And as I start to open my guard and go into this lasso position, I'm squeezing my legs together tight on his body. Now notice the big space that I start to get as this happens, right? So from here, I'm squeezing everything nice and tight. I'm sliding, my foot goes on his hip and my knee goes next to his arm. I've still got those sleeve grips, now I push off that other foot to make some more space to get this other knee inside. Now I'm in this, uh, I call it like cage guard position. So this happens in nogi quite a bit as well. If you're defending punches, I can grab behind his biceps, or I mean his triceps and start putting my knees into his biceps and opening up. So this is, pretty common for a no gi scenario. I like to get into omoplatas and triangles and all kinds of things from here as well. But for the gi, we're gonna keep the sleeve grips, open guard, make this big space. See that big gap that happens? Slide that knee in there. My foot goes to his hips, my toes are pointed out. I use that to push off him to make some more space to get this other foot on his hip. I'm opening my knees out, pulling him into me and making this nice and tight. Now from here I push, I like to go with lasso with my left leg, so I push with my right hip. Make that space again. This circles over top. I put it in deep into his armpit and flex my toes. And then I'm pulling his hand deep to my hip and I'm keeping my knuckles on top of my leg. So it makes it a little more difficult for him to pull his arm out. It doesn't make it impossible, but it's gonna stop him for just a second as I start to do other things, right? So I still have this sleeve grip. From here, I like to pull him into me, which makes a little bit of space for me to get this half guard in. So my instructor, Gustavo Machado, is a big, big half guard guy, and he kind of grew up under Gordo, who pretty much made the half guard offensive, uh, is what they say. So I'm big into half guard stuff, and I, I play it everywhere I'm at. So we get this half guard position, toes engaged on the mat, pulling his leg into me. So he kind of feels that he wants to get that leg back. From this position, I go here, and I start pulling his leg. I'm looking for this pant leg. Now I'm looking knee bump to his chest. Boom. Like, don't follow the mark yet. Yeah. So, 
Sometimes people will fall over, so most of the time they won't. So I use this as like a battering ram. I'm slamming it into his chest and I want to bridge up on my shoulder and then bump into him to make him kind of close backwards. Most of the time that handle come back to stop him from sweeping. But sometimes he just, the guy just falls over, you end up on top, right? Which is cool too. So trying to get inside to his pant leg, if I can get it, palm up, get that battering ram, boom. He bumps back. Normally it gives me a little bit of input back. I bring him up this direction and now I load him and I put him toward where my toes are pointing right now. So I just load him up and over and I uh, like do ballerina feet so I don't smash my feet as I push them up and over. And then I keep my leg back on the way through. I keep this arm. Right hand starts to look for the hip. So this leg gets uh, blocked from coming back into any kind of guard, right? Go here, my left hand is in the perfect spot to start putting pressure on his face already. If you notice, I land here, it's automatic. My shoulder's directly next to his carotid artery. He can't really go anywhere. Most of the time they'll try and turn in. I go here, now I scoop. Most of the time he he's, gives me this giant space around his back, right? So I get as deep as I can, two fingers in, and then I start to drive my knee down and scoop this arm up. Now I get deep inside. My knee goes next to his hip. My left knee goes deep underneath his back, opening my legs out, and then I come over top. So this is pretty common again. You guys have seen me wrist lock everybody all week probably. This always happens. Like So this is going to be there most of the time. So I go. And we wrist lock them. So I, I show that every time because people just automatically do it. And if they didn't do that, then I would just go into over under position and you have like an over under uh, great control, right? So again, hips, wrists, tight, kegels, squeeze everything tight. You need to make that space, put those in the hip, make more space, push away. Oops, so I kick them in the face, <laughs> lasso, pull this arm in, right? fist on top of my leg, pull him to me, trap that leg, pull that leg in, make it, make it bother him. Cause I want him to feel that. He's like, I want that leg back. I'm like, I know what you're doing. And then I go here, right hand looks for that leg. I pull my body into him, grab a hold of whatever I can get a hold of, battering ram. Right hand next to his hip. Normally they turn into me. Left hand goes deep underneath the armpit, drive into a space, knee goes to the ground, scoop up that near side elbow. Get this good control, and then just hold it in front of my face most of the time. Go here. <laughs> Maybe move it. But, I but it's always like the misery and pressure. Uh, look for those wrist locks all over. Just want to work into the sweep mostly, but you guys have seen those wrist locks are pretty uh, available all over the place, right? So again, one last one. Oops. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's just taking a beating. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> So, sleeves, open, slide, cage guard, last go, hold it in me, trap that foot, look for the pants, bridge, kick, right hand next to his legs, left hand goes underneath the shoulder, drive that knee to the mat, and scoop up, and rest lock. For the nogi guys, real quick like, Same idea, open, and I start to just open my guard and start to get into this kind of position. So from here, I can start to get into the half guard and grab a hold of this with the hand here, right? So I'm just like grabbing that little fatty part of his hand. Like MMA gloves, you really get a hold of that wrist pretty good. And you know, I just do this from half guard pretty often as well because Half guard knee shield, the guy normally starts pushing on my leg and driving down inside, right? He threads the needle. And I'm like, oh, look, now I have this. Now I do the same thing. I'm looking for this, boom. I still bump them, bring them up and over. Hand goes next to the hip, hand goes underneath his head. Drive that knee shield, sneak. And wrist lock. And one last thing, guys, if you uh, work through this sleep, you know, you, whatever you're working, the, uh, there's a bicep slicer here. If you come up on top of this, this arm, just be careful with this. Uh, stay on your hip. Don't come up on your knee because you will screw this guy's arm up pretty good. So we're here. Well, 
if I were to come up here and my leg gets stuck in here, so most people's legs, maybe he starts getting stuck. So remember to get that leg through as you're kind of pushing them up and over to this position. I can hang out here for quite a while and not do much of anything else. From there, if you wanted to come up to a bicep slicer, I come here, the shin goes across his bicep and I get to this kind of spot. Be careful with your friends with this, it sucks. So I'm not saying to do this, I'd never do this because it's a low percentage and I kind of lose connection, but it's there if you guys are into that kind of thing. But be aware and be careful of it, right? So kick that leg through on the way out. On my hip, my knee goes over top of his shoulder to get to the mat first. So I can scoop that arm up and then start driving in and make connection with the body nice and tight. Any questions on that? Okay, let's give it a shot. One, two. Does anybody have any questions on that? Got a pretty good idea of kind of how this is happening right now? Remember that side control position. If I don't have control of that near side elbow, I don't go cross body. Very, very important in my opinion. Uh, it's probably the most important part of the side control. Just on your back real quick. So as we go from this position, hand goes next to the hip. This blocks that leg. Hand goes underneath his head, driving. My knee goes next to his body, tight. I want to have connection. I don't want to have space out here because that leaves him room to get this elbow back. So I need to have that tight connection against his body, putting pressure on his head. And I scoop this knee up here. That does a lot more to his arm. See where that pressure is here? Now my hand is blocking that knee, but I need something to take care of that knee. If I just go here, he just moves that knee in front of me and starts getting this knee into a wedge again, right? So. I need something to block it. So my hand goes here first, boom. Now I scoop that elbow up. Now my knee goes next to his body. Now when he tries to do that, it's much more difficult. So try and keep those knees connected to the body, control the near side elbow and any kind of side control that you guys are playing with. It's just, you know, second nature for, you know, this sweep to get right into that perfect position, but try to really focus on that and you'll start to see the control get so much better, right? Uh, so next thing we're gonna go into, <coughs> it's gonna be similar. I'd like you guys to start in this closed guard still because the movement is really, really important for different guards later, right? So, thumbs up. We got our little horse stance grip. Open the guard, make space, slide, connection. Open my legs out, push off his hips, lasso deep, pull him into me. Fist goes right on top of my leg. Now I go into half guard. Trap that leg, bother this hand a little bit, look for that leg. We get here. Now I bridge up, get my hips off the mat, battering ram to the sternum, boom, here. Most of the time that hand will post there. Now I'm going to second option. So I get rid of that half guard. My knee's going to slide through. I'm looking to bring this arm through the, underneath the, his, his left arm right to his elbow. And then I move my body to the other direction. Squeeze my knees together nice and tight. Here, Turn the, el the arm over. So I use this hand initially to push his elbow this direction because to finish the arm bar, I needed the arm this way. If he turns his arm up, now I've lost that arm bar. So I need to go automatic to here, push the elbow over top. And then once that thing is turned, I grab a hold of it and I finish the yeah. straight arm bar. It goes really, really fast. So don't rip into your buddies. So just go nice and slow, smooth. And there's like no it. tapping hands just for the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a verbal tap for sure. So we're here, open, slide. Open my knees. Right, so bring them into me. Try to leg up here. Oh. Knee slides through, big space, drive that elbow over top, grab a hold of it, squeeze my knees together, more Kegels, get those little Pilates rings, right? We go to the top of the elbow, and then we've got all this space between my body. If you get his arm kind of stuck here, there's nowhere to break that thing, right? So I need to concave my body, make this little space between my elbow and his, or his elbow and my chest, turning that elbow over, and then I just go and pop that arm. Really, really nice arm bar that I get pretty often. So, for no gi guys, half guard, knee shield, knee thread, and get you, thread this at the top. Yeah. Can you guys see what I'm talking about? You guys end up in this position maybe a lot. They put the chest down, start smashing your legs together. I just turn my knee up to the ceiling here, grab a hold of his hand, push, pop. Knee comes through, sneeze everything together, turn this elbow over top, bring it to the side of my face, clamp it with my shoulder and my chin. Turn the elbow over, grab a hold of whatever I can get now, keep turning it, and then finish the straight on bar. Questions on that one? Let's give it a shot. One, on two.
So a bunch of small little details are, are going to work themselves out as you guys start playing with this a little bit. I like to work this uh, arm bar when guys have really strong bases, right? So I'll try the first sweep just to see if the guy's going to go for it, right? Maybe get that first sweep that works really well. If the guy's got a really good base and he's like not going to go over at all, then that's when I rip right into the second one. So I'll try it again a second time and he's already kind of waiting for it. So he posts that arm and I'm already hunting it. So I'm, I'm not just hoping that it'll come to my face. I make it come there. So I'm looking for that underhook, sliding it to the side of my face as I'm turning back that other direction. Mark the board again, sir. <coughs> so we'll just start writing the lasso so you guys can get some more reps from these things. Toes need to be on the mat. Very, very important because I want him to want that leg out. And this will go into the next things as we, as we kind of progress. Toes on the mat, really, really important. And pull that thing to me a bit. So as I get this palm up inside of his knee, I can push away his knee as well if you have no gi stuff. So no gi grip, I'll just go here. Boom, bump that. Yep, exactly. I, I want that, like, I, so in order to get a bit more of drive, right? If I just go here and bridge, I don't get a lot of uh, drive forward, right? So. I kind of bring my shoulders, and I forget to even mention this a lot of times, so I, I bring my shoulders this way as I like bump into them. So I, I get a little bit more like battering ram to the chest. If I just try it from here, maybe he posts, but probably not. But as I'm here, I'm looking for that leg bothering, and then I'm like, boom, yeah, that'll happen. Now when I come back, I'm bringing this arm to me. I'm looking for that underhook, boom. My knee is coming through. If it starts to go over my face, I even crash it. Right. Now I can make a little bit more space to keep that arm. Most of the time he's wanting to turn his arm up. So I'm like, I, I stay here. Now I'm looking for that thing. I, I can even grab a hold of it now, even if he's starting to get his hand up. And I start to turn it, turn it, turn it. I like my foot on the outside now uh, by his hip line. And I put my knee across his back. I used to finish this the same way, but with my foot in. So I was here, bring my knee through, and I would squeeze everything from this spot. So I'd have this kind of butterfly hook and the ability to go back into the lasso if I didn't get it. But I got so good at hitting the straight arm bar that I like to get my foot on the top of his uh, back and put it next to his hip so I can make more pressure and, and kind of uh, prevent him from posturing up a little bit. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. <laughs> so that's the second option. So all of these kind of evolved into this, you know, next step of stuff that I like to do. Um, <clears throat> so. We're going to go into uh, lasso here. If you've got no gi, we're getting the hand grip, a little fatty part, looking for that knee. Always like bothering his arm. If I didn't get his lapel open earlier, I'm going to open it now. So I'm always like here, bother, 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 bumping, moving him around, bother, bother, bother. Now for uh, a cool little gi choke that I love to do. It's a nice little uh, sweep. I'll show you guys this for the gi people, and then we'll add some more stuff for no gi people in a minute. So. I'm doing all this stuff. I got sleeve grip. Bother, bother, bother. Open, bumping it on. Maybe I don't want to like that straight arm bar anymore. I'm here. I look for the bottom of the lapel. So this little tail of the lapel, my left hand's going to go right inside of his gi here. From this point, I pull my elbow this direction. I pull his face towards the mat, and then I throw this lapel around his head. This is called the worm hat choke. It's pretty neat. Uh, Keenan showed me this a few years back, and I was like, oh, yeah, I like that. I'm going to do that from this lasso guard. So we're here, bother, bother, bother. Oh, lasso stuff. Boom. Open this lapel. Elbow comes to the mat. Move my knee out of the way. I pull his head to me, and then I just throw my lapel over his head. From here, I can finish uh, the choke, but most of the time I use this to sweep, so I kind of turn his body this direction. He'll likely sweep himself. And then I get to knee on belly spot. My knuckles go inside next to his earlobe and then i drive my knuckles into the side of his head and i pull this lapel to finish the choke it's really really gnarly and you can get pretty rude with it if you want to go on the side of his face so this middle knuckle is going to go next to his earlobe so look for that spot knuckle next to earlobe fist in pull on that lapel right and you can look at it from up here again mark please mark just loves this <laughs> <laughs> What, what a fun guy. About eight months of this. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't ever go cross collar standing up, but just to show you guys, cross collar for here, this idea. Like, pull over the head. I just turn my elbow down. Yeah. And then I turn my knuckles into the side of his face. I get knee on belly position. And then I finish the choke. So, run the lasso again.
Pastor, trap the foot. By the name of QDC. So. There we go. How's this? Is this better? Everybody kind of see? Knee bothered, open lapel, knees up toward the ceiling, moving them around a little bit. Look for that tail. Look for the cross collar. Elbow comes out, post. I'm gonna kick my left leg through so I can break his posture down a bit. Right now I've got a frame in front of him, so it's it's hard to just pull my body up over his head. So I have to kick this through, pop up, go over top of his head, turn my arms this direction. Knee on belly, fist next to the side of his face. And then I finish the choke. You guys have questions on that? Okay, let's give it a shot, a couple times. One, two. So I had a couple of really good questions here. Like, it doesn't matter if I let go of that lasso guard. Doesn't matter, we're still doing all lasso guard stuff. We're kind of setting it up, bothering his legs, framing his arms, playing with that lapel a little bit, opening that thing up so I have access to it later. And then I go into essentially, I'm just in a half guard knee shield position. So I let go of that grip. I don't care about it anymore. I go into half guard with that cross collar grip. So Mark Nabar, sir. So what I mean by that is if I didn't have any grips and we'd never started off into any kind of lasso stuff, I would still have my, my toes on the mat, keeping control of that near side leg that I'm trapping now. This is like a frame that I'd be using. This prevents his hands from grabbing a hold of stuff, which I don't want to happen, right? This keeps some distance and I've got a frame, right? So elbow in front of your knee is the best in my opinion. If you go outside, it's much easier for him to smash this leg down and start getting into passing situations. So this makes it a little bit harder without any grips. I've still got the same kind of situation. You're just in a half guard knee shield. So as we're opening this lapel, bothering here, looking for this, I start to get to this spot. Once I get access to this lapel and there's plenty of it out, which is normally after I shake their hand because I'm gonna open it and then I'll take them down and choke them with this later somewhere, right? So, <laughs> so frame, frame, frame. Once I get access to this thing, I can still prevent him from grabbing a hold of me with his hand with this lapel trap here. I'm like, I don't, I don't want you to do any of that. And then I look for this, I'm cross collar. It's only a cross collar choke. My hand never moves. I want you to be able to feel their ear with my little thumb here. So see how I'm like, oh, give him a little massage in the back of his ear, he likes it. He's better than getting his knuckles in his face, right? Yeah. <laughs> so from that point, now I kick my leg through, which allows him to pull his body down. And then I just throw this over the top of his head, turn, 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 turn. And then I go knee on belly for pictures. Now my thumb goes down, or my palm goes down. The back of my hand is next to his head. Now my palm is down, and then I start driving in. And I like neon belly, because uh, you have a nice picture of your face here for the good photos, IBJJF tournaments or whatever you guys are into. Right. So a uh, couple of really good, good questions there. And that half guard knee shield is great for, you know, no gi as well. So think about like, all I'm doing is this, this is it. Elbows and knees are close together, framing, preventing grips. And then I'm just kicking that through and throwing that lapel over his face. So this is a really nice, fun choke to play with. Uh, and that half guard knee shield is a great position to be in for a half guard kind of uh, position as you guys start evolving your offensive half guard stuff later. So last kind of a sweep that I think is probably the best sweep in the world and most, uh, I think about 95% I get this thing every time, but when I don't, I have an answer. So I wanna go through that with you guys. So we're gonna get in that lapel situation if you know gi, we're just gonna have our uh, hand grip bothering his uh, arms, moving that leg around a little bit. Then we're, we've done all the things that I've been talking about doing this, maybe trying to get that straight arm bar. Maybe the guy's really good. And then at some point, after I bothered him for a little bit and he's starting to get like, I wanna get a hold of this guy, but I can't because he keeps moving around. And I'm like, ah. and then I'll go here, toes come up. After I bothered him pulling on this thing for a bit, because most guys want to pull that leg out of there. They're like, I want that leg to come through. So I start bothering here like, and I'm like, hmm. toes come up. He's like, ha ha, I got him. And then I just go here. I just do a forward shrimp motion like you do in like the warm up for jujitsu. I'm looking for my hand to just be next to his hip. I don't go searching for it. My elbow stays tight on the mat here. I do this forward shrimping position, kick my leg through again. And then I'm looking for that hip and I just get under the center of gravity of his body. So you can see he's already starting to go over. If you use it as like a, you know, a, a quick movement, it goes really, really fast. So from here, put those next to my body. I do a little bump, pop. Now I get right into that same position most of the time. 
Maybe I'll go into this double under position or I'll go right into that first lap again. Again, Mark, please. So, did you guys come to my takedown class for the day? Mm -hmm. yep. A couple guys, yeah. So it's essentially almost the same thing as just falling down in front of my opponent with that uh, two-on-one position. I'm just getting under that center of gravity and just knocking his body through. It's crazy how good it works on really, really big people. David, can I borrow you, sir? He's a bit big. Can I borrow you, David? Yeah, yeah you. David, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got bigger. He's got a little more weight than Mark. Uh, so I love this on big guys because they always have aggression toward smaller people. They always want to drive, 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 drive. So as I get to the spot, I'm here, I bother all these things, looking for this, I'm like, oh, I'm flipping inside, and, and then I go here at some point, and he's like, oh, I want to kick that leg back and start to pass. And he starts to pass, forward shrimp, here, fucking over. And double arm bars go there as well. So the sweep is really what I want you guys to feel. It's stupid how easy this thing works, and it, it's like, I get there when they don't want me to do this, and they stay far, far back. Even if David, like, Know if I do this, and he's like, I'm not doing that anymore. He just gets his hip down to the mat, hips down, hips down. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so once you start to figure out like the mechanics of it, you could force people into this. Not that I'm saying that you should force your jiu-jitsu. Should make it that nice and smooth, easy kind of position to get to. But you can see that all I do is just pull my body underneath them. So I can do that from here as well. In the other lasso, people like to play lasso guard like this as well. I can just go and bump into that, but I feel I'm not as effective with that as baiting them with all this other stuff first. Bother, bump here. I'm like, oh. You guys can see that again? Question? Yeah, yeah, please. One more? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get this opportunity very often. <laughs> so this is what really does it. Toes on the mat, pulling that leg because he wants that thing back. It like he's like, I want that. I'm like, no, you can't, you can't have it. And then I give it to him. He's like, ha ha, I got you. Forward shrimp, pull, bump, scoop the arm up, hand on my face, drive that knee underneath, pull the spine to me, step over top, arm bar, arm bar. Great control position. Pretty much that first top side control that we did for the first sweep. Anybody have questions on that? All right, let's give it a shot. One, two. Uh, when this thing fails, and, and a couple of small details that people brought up as questions uh, as we're going through, right? So. It kind of matters where my leg goes. So Mark can reverse sir. So ideally, when Mark starts to pass, I've got this position. If I leave my knee here in front, you can get some stuff happening. And there's like a bicep slice that you can get to here as well. Doesn't work that well, so I, I don't ever do it, but you can get there. So this is kind of what you're ending up in. They're like, oh, oh, it's not working, it's not working. All I'm doing is kicking this leg through. So I straighten my leg out and see how he's kind of uh, cavorting himself a little bit. Then I just pull myself. And then I kick my leg to the side, straightened out. Then I bump. And then I go over under. You get, you know, Americanas, Camoras, whatever from there. Yes, ma'am. Nope, that's a great question as well. So I did have some other questions like that. Uh, is it better to underhook the legs or scoop it up or grab, grab on the pants? You can do that for sure. I like this because I automatically have over under position and both arms are controlled and I automatically have two arm bars that I'll get on most people immediately or that Americana or that uh, wrist lock. So that hand pushing through from this position. Like here, bother, bother, bother. Mark's kicking his leg out. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna pass. I'm like, cool, come on through. This hand here, as I pull my body in and bump. Look this already in this great spot and then i start to use my legs to get his hips to the other side and then start looking for the control but i i like that much better you can totally do it by scooping the legs as well i just think your options for submissions immediately after are so much better if you use that to bump and then drive that hand through that helps them get over a little bit more and then you're already in that over under position like talking on the phone preventing them from putting that hand in front of their face unless you want to wrist lock them so which is always a good option 
So the last one, um, I kind of showed you guys a little bit of this as that, you know, uh, two on one drop wrecking ball, whatever you want to call it, thing didn't work yesterday, right? So it's the same idea with the lapel stuff. And this is a, a gi thing specific for the no gi guys. Just keep working that sweep again. And we'll also come up without the lapel into a wrestle up position. So I'm doing the exact same thing. So as we get here, I've done all the things we talked about. Bothered, move this, open lapel, start to bump around. Yeah. yeah. Give the crowd a view. Yeah. So all this, I like this lapel later. Like I said, slap hands, open lapel. I'm going to choke you with it somewhere. Bother, 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 bump. And now Mark's like, oh, I want to get that leg out. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And now I go here. And for whatever reason, you forgot some stuff. And you're like, oh, maybe the guy's giant and you can't get this thing happening, right? So the follow on movement is just like it was yesterday or whenever I taught the, the wrestling stuff. So I go here, I'm like, ah, and then he's kind of pulling back. And as he does that, I'm like, I just come up around the leg. This lapel feeds through the middle. Then I'm looking for this arm. And I drive, 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 drive. Throw the pressure out of hips. And now I've got this grip again, which I call the joystick. I got this from Gustavo as well. He's a wizard with this thing. And then from here, I switch the grips. Thumb goes up. And then I go up over top. You've got cool arm bars if you want to jump into these things. <laughs> But you can go quickly into these transitions as well. So for no gi guys, it'll be like this. Hands, bump, move around. Let go down. Oh, it didn't work, it didn't work. So I just come into a wrestle up position. If you have a lapel, I love to feed the lapel through the middle of the legs because I'm gonna do a bunch of weird stuff with it later into the joystick world. Uh, if you don't have a lapel, it's really just a wrestle up. So the more input that you can give them, you know, trying to get the sweep will allow him to pull back a little bit more so you can easily get back up into that wrestle up position. So one last with the gi, open the pal, got grips, frames, bump, move around a little bit. Like, oh no, he wants to pass. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna pass. I'm like, oh no, it didn't work. Oh, oh. Feed, drive. So the pressure. Drive that knee away, hand goes up, go over top. Do cool stuff or just stay here in this position. And then wrist lock. <laughs> wrist lock the world. Uh, questions? Play with this for a couple minutes. I know it's a short time, but we can play with this and open mat if you guys want as well. And uh, what's that? Two minutes. Out. Two minutes? Yeah, I do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, give it a shot, guys. A couple times, please. One, two. Oh. <laughs> This don't matter if you guys want. It's a really good position. I've got a whole bunch of weird things that I play with this uh, joystick grip, uh, like the Scabble calls it. It's amazing. From uh, passing guard, from half guard, from full guard, whatever. I'm playing with this thing everywhere. So uh, it's a nice little place to be in. It's good with this wrestle up for gi, no gi. And you can see that this sweep is just ridiculous how easy it is when, when you kind of start playing with it. So the more aggression they put forward, all I'm doing is kicking my leg through and then pulling myself in. But, and most of the time I get the sweep. When you don't get the sweep, you have options for wrestlers. But you have to be on it for that next position if you don't get the first one, right? So uh, just think about that. And uh, I think the next one is Dennis. Thank you guys for coming out. It's been a great week, and I uh, appreciate all the training.